Hello everyone, my name is Elena aka Minty Mito, and if you're new here, welcome, and if you're not, welcome back to my channel where I do fun art challenges and talk about whatever's on my mind. And today we have something very exciting, we have the 10th installment of my Drawing Your Sonic OCs series. The Big Ten. I can't believe I've made 10 of these, this is very wild, I- wow. <laughs> Thank you so much for supporting this series this whole time, to all of you who continue to watch my channel and who really appreciate this series, I appreciate you guys so much. If you'd like to see the other videos, in this series. I do have a playlist of all of them on my channel, so you are welcome to go binge them all if you enjoy this one. And since it's the 10th one, I did want to make it a little bit different and special. So for starters, instead of the usual five OCs that I do for these types of videos, I of course did 10, which I did do once before for some reason. And then I was like, whoa, that's too many. Never doing that again. But this time is different. I'm doing it for a special occasion, so it's okay. And the other change I made for this video is that instead of randomly selecting the OC, that I draw like I usually do. I went through all the submissions and I personally selected these 10 OCs for today. There were so, so, so many that I wanted to do. It was really, really hard to narrow it down. All of you were such talented artists and writers, but of course, as an artist myself, I did end up going with submissions where I was specifically drawn to the art and the character design because I gotta give my fellow artists some love. So I'm really excited to show you guys all of these awesome OCs today. And if you are interested interested in submitting your Sonic OC for the chance to maybe have your OC drawn by me in a future video, you may fill out the submission form, which I will have linked down in the description. And if you really want your OC to be drawn by me and you have the budget for it, I'm also now offering Sonic OC commissions along with a few other commission offerings on my Kofi page, which will also be linked in the description. We've got lots of drawing to do today, so let's just hop into it. All right, welcome to the time lapse, everybody. For our first OC, we have Terios the Fennec Fox submitted by Silver. And Terios has a bit of an intense backstory, so let me just hop into that. So, Terios is from a different dimension, a more modern version of Mobius in the year 2182. And in this dimension, Mobius is a lot more futuristic, and nature, technology, and space are in perfect utopian unison. He was born in a village located in Crystal Desert where he and his friends. And family lived in peace. His mother works as a jewelry maker and his father works as a guard for the village's leader. Because of his mother, he gained a hyperfixation on crystals and other precious stones and generally knows everything about them. One day, while Terios and his cousins were playing tag, one of his cousins got attacked by a python and Terios saved her by lunging his hands forward and unleashing a blast of darkness. Terios passes out due to exhaustion and when he wakes up, his mother explains these abilities to him. Terios has the power of umbrokinesis, the ability to generate and manipulate manipulate darkness. With this power, Terios is able to create anything he puts his mind to, such as objects, three-dimensional shadows, and even weapons. Later on, when Terios was just 10 years old, he went out to collect water from a river for his mother, but returns to find the village up in flames and witnesses his mother's death. Out of terror, he runs away to the forest and receives a mysterious blow to the head. He later wakes up in a tube in an underground facility where Dr. Scar, a scientist, explains that Terios is his greatest creation. Terios now suffers from amnesia and can't recall his past because he was kept in a coma for 14 years, and the scientists in the facility made sure he would remember nothing. Dr. Scar also gives him high-tech clothes and a gem called the Twilight Barrel, which is able to upgrade his powers by collecting negative energy from organic life forms. Some of these upgrades include mind control and entering the mind of anyone he wishes to, as well as creating doppelgangers of said person. Very scary. This is pretty intense. As time went on, Dr. Scar invented a portal that was able to cross dimensions. On their first test, they managed to open a portal to cyberspace, where they found Infinite the Jackal, which is the villain from Sonic Forces, for anyone who doesn't remember, and they took him in to ask questions about the Phantom Ruby. During this time, Terio slowly falls in love with Infinite. When Dr. Scar figures out how to get to Sonic's dimension, he, Terios, and robots enter to conquer it. Sonic and friends, along with Team Rebel, which consists of Vixen the Cat, Strad the Iguana, and Lumi the Moth, Silver's other OCs, they work to stop Dr. Scar and save Terios from his amnesia. So yeah, pretty intense a backstory, and it's funny I don't think this is the first or even the second time that I've drawn an OC who was romantically involved with Infinite. We love to see it. I had a great time with this one. I chose this OC because I loved Terios's color palette, his backstory of course, and the character sheet that Silver made is so excellent. I really really love how his eyes look glowing in the dark. And you'll notice maybe with this batch of OCs that I definitely wanted to be more experimental with the posing for the most part. I tend to just kind of draw them standing there and I did do that for a few of 
them, but I wanted to try more dynamic fluid action poses wherever possible, and this is one of those. I also took a slightly different approach to the coloring, but only for this. So see, I was just in an experimental mood, I guess. I made the colors really loose and then added some blending mode layers on top to try to get some unique color results, and then I shrunk that mess down and color picked from it. It was a nice experiment that I think could work for other pieces, but I realized I already had like a really logical step-by-step -step approach with how I've been doing the drawings for this series, so I just continued doing that for the rest of them. But with that being said, I do think because of this new method I tried, Terios does have one of the more interesting like color palettes and effects on him, so I might revisit this technique in the future. But anyways, thank you so much Silver for your submission, I hope you like how I drew Terios. Next up, we have She the Red Fox, submitted by She Sketches, and she is from a small village near an oasis in Shamar, but was forced to leave her home when Eggman destroyed the surrounding area in search of oil reserves slash other natural resources for his robotic creations. As a result, she took it upon herself to join the resistance efforts during Sonic Forces, working as a scout in order to gather and report intel on Eggman's army. However, she ended up living in Seaside City after the war ended, opting to spend her free time drawing, baking, and training in various martial arts. She received her photokinetic powers at birth and learned how to use them at a very young age. She promised to use her gifts to spread her own little light however she can, especially after witnessing the pain Eggman caused on the world. She's always willing to help out whenever there's a conflict and can be a bit of a people pleaser due to her desire to become friends with almost everyone she meets. In terms of relations with Sonic and friends, she's generally seen as a loyal ally and she's good friends with the members of Team Chaotix. She frequently visits their office in order to assist as a part-time secretary and and also enjoys having friendly sparring matches with Espio, who she sees as a mentor as well as her closest friend. The two of them have a serious calm versus impulse slash naive dynamic. So I am very excited about drawing this OC because She Sketches is actually a fellow art YouTuber and so I just had to choose her OC. She's also drawn my OC in one of her videos so feel free to go check that out. And she's such an amazing artist. As you can tell from the references she sent, her art is absolutely incredible and adorable and so distinctive. I really love her art style so much, so please go check out her channel and give her some love. And thank you, She, for also always giving my videos lots of love. I really appreciate it. But aside from my respect for this fellow artist, I also just think this character design is really wonderful. She is such a cute character. I love the complimentary color palette of blue and orange, and I also love learning about her backstory and her powers. Thank you for your submission, She. I loved drawing your OC. She is so cute, and I hope that you like my rendition of her. Next up, we have Ren the Sea Bunny, submitted by Night Owl. And Ren is a sea bunny slug, and they have the ability to produce liquid toxins from anywhere on their body, since real sea bunny slugs are naturally poisonous due to their diets. She's an adventure type despite being blind, and Ren just wants to explore the world as they've lived in the sea for most of their life. Their blindness doesn't matter to them as they still want to experience what the upper surface has to offer. They're a bit naive and ditzy, and he can also be blunt, but he means well. And I just have to say, I absolutely fell in love with this design and concept when I saw it, so that is why I chose to draw Ren. He's so simple yet so appealing. I really just love their whole look. I don't know if you guys have seen a sea bunny before, but here's a picture for reference. It is a, according to Wikipedia, a marine gastropod mollusk. I don't even know what that means, but basically it's this adorable little wacky sea creature, and I think it's so creative that you chose to make it into a Sonic OC, and you really nailed the design, in my opinion. I love her so much. Amazing job. Since Ren has such a simple color palette, it was just really therapeutic and relaxing working on this one. Thank you so much again, Night Owl, for your submission. I love Ren, and I hope that you like how I drew them. Next up, we have Timber the Raccoon, submitted by Lucas. And Timber has no special abilities, however, they are ambidextrous, a very skilled planner, and they're really good at sneaking around. Once they got initiated into the Eggman Empire, they were even given a glove which allowed them to control Eggman's badniks. So speaking of that, Timber's backstory goes as follows. They were born in Windmill Village to parents who weren't the most financially stable. Timber's parents did everything they could to support their child, but ended up falling into thievery and profiting off the stolen jewels they were selling. When Timber's parents went out jewel hunting, they frequently left Timber in the care of someone named Mr. Tinker, who taught them how to craft things. This didn't last too long though, because Timber's parents began taking them on their jewel hunts, which eventually earned them enough money to move to Sunset City, where they opened up a jewelry store called Sunset Jewels. Timber hated going jewel hunting with their parents, wishing that they weren't thieves and that they all still lived in Windmill Village. Then one day, of course, Dr. Eggman attacked, taking half the citizens prisoner, two of them being Timber's parents. Upon learning that their parents were captured, Timber 
member panicked, but then devised a plan. That night, they would sneak into Dr. Eggman's lair and break out their parents. Once they got in, they saw what the doctor was really doing. He was turning everyone into robots. Timber hurried and found the room of prisoners, including their parents, who scolded them for doing something so dangerous, but this had alerted Eggman and he barged into the room demanding to hear what all the commotion was about. Timber briefly thought about how Dr. Eggman actually reminded them of Mr. Tinker, but then began to plead for the doctor to let their parents go. They said they'd do anything, get roboticized, or even work for the doctor. Eggman initially felt inclined to just roboticize them, but decided to take them up on the offer to work for him, but only under one condition, if Timber pledged their full allegiance to the Eggman Empire. As part of the Eggman Empire, their job was to scavenge for badnik parts since the doctor was impressed with their stealth skills. They also contributed by giving upgrades to the badniks and even to Metal Sonic. Their final task was something that they came up with on their own, which was sneaking into the headquarters of the Resistance and gathering intel on Sonic and his allies for the doctor. Once in the Resistance headquarters, they took some time to adjust because they were finally free of Eggman, and the people there actually treated them fairly, which caused Timber to rethink this mission. They began to help within the Resistance and during their battle with Eggman to free all the roboticized citizens, they stood up to Eggman and joined Sonic on his side of the fight. So needless to say, I chose this OC because of the wonderful, charming design. Timber is too cute and their coat being similar to Eggman's also caught my eye. So reading their whole backstory, I just knew I had to draw them. I love this concept so much. I decided to draw them with this above angle because I wanted to show Timber using the Eggman communication panel on their glove. And this is not an angle I'm used to drawing at all, but I'm actually really proud of how it looks and how it turned out. I love how the coloring came together and I'm just really proud of the shading I did. So yeah, thanks so much Lucas for your submission. I love Timber. I loved drawing them and I hope that you like how my drawing turned out. For our next OC, we have Bristle the Brush-Tailed Fast Kegel, submitted by Aloud. I hope I'm saying that animal name correctly. And Aloud let me know that the reference sheet provided is a bit outdated, but a general look of how he conceptualized Bristle. So Bristle is just a civilian Mobian who moved into Sunset Heights to open up an art shop slash art studio. He managed to survive both the war against Eggman and Infinite and the Metal Virus outbreak, so he keeps his creative love for art alive. He met his Chow, who is his best friend and a studio assistant named Pallet, aka Pal, as a kid while painting on the hill of a valley close to his hometown. During the day, Bristle and Pal spend their time creating fun pieces and tending to the customers who come to their store, as well as providing the city with motivating and beautiful pieces of art to keep the spirits of the citizens up and pay tributes to the heroes who help them live their lives to the fullest. They even often run into the main cast like Amy, Cream, and Sonic that come to the store looking for art supplies. During some nights though, Bristle dons a sort of alter ego. He goes around other neighboring towns tagging up really impressive artworks during the night for the people to wonder about when they discover it the morning after. However, the police are not a big fan of course, and with Pal joining him, they both have a lot of fun and get into a lot of hijinks. Bristle is really sweet and kind, but definitely exudes a confident energy, while Pal is really shy. Bristle cleans his tail constantly because he uses it to paint, and he's also able to stuff his tail with spray cans when they go out tagging during the night. It's sort of like a cartoon bag, he can fit a lot of things in his tail. So yes, another beautiful OC. It probably goes without saying the reasons why I chose to draw Bristle. I mean, he's an artist. It's his whole thing. I love it. And Aloud, your artwork is so incredible. Just gorgeous. I can't praise you enough. The references you sent are amazing. And I think what really sold me is his nighttime alter ego outfit. I love this look so much. He went from this cute little adorable art guy to a cool and slightly mischievous character. And I love that duality so much. So I knew I definitely wanted to draw him in his nighttime outfit. And I have him and Pal holding paintbrushes too though just because I wanted to. I also really really adore Pal's design. He's so cute and you did such a phenomenal job designing these characters. It was honestly intimidating to do my own version and I had a lot of trouble getting down a pose that I was happy with but I am pleased with the final result. So thank you aloud for your submission. I hope that you like how I drew your OC. Next up, we have Sun the Tiger, submitted by Bioroi, and Sun's powers are based on the sun, so mainly she has telekinesis. It mostly consists of light and heat abilities, ranging from energy bursts to radiating sunlight from herself, and involves some pyrokinesis too. She can't control fire, but she can use the sun's heat to make things burn, similar to how a magnifying glass would kill an ant. She also has the ability to heal herself and others. On top of that, she's also a remarked source 
swordswoman being a pirate and she tends to use it more than her actual powers. And generally, she is really fast but her main attribute is her strength so she is a power type character. In terms of backstory, we have another fairly intense one. So, Sun was born in the Soul Dimension, which is the same one that Lays the Cat is from, and she was born as the daughter of a pirate's crew captain. Everyone on the ship had elemental-based powers that could develop by coming in contact with said element often. For example, someone who has water-based powers can make their abilities grow by touching it, same with air-based abilities through vapor or wind. Sun didn't have the same opportunities as everyone else. She was heavily underdeveloped by not being directly in contact with the sun. Every element is considered by the crew as entities as well, and so the sun was harder to get in contact with because obviously it's super far away. Basking in its light alone wasn't enough to make her as powerful as her peers. What she lacked in supernatural abilities though, she made up for in strength and wit and mostly was encouraged by her mother. Her father was a bit of a hostile man and as soon as Sun turned 16, he realized that she wasn't able enough to command the crew in the future in his opinion. So he decided to get rid of both Sun and her mother in front of her. He made her walk the plank and even tied her with chains in hopes to drown her, but she was tougher than she looked. Before she could drown, the sun and the water revealed themselves to her and moments before losing consciousness, Sun managed to come into contact with the sun long enough to become as powerful as a sort of demigod. And Yeroi mentions that it's a lot more deep than this, but she was trying to keep it as short as she could. And so Sun ended up surviving thanks to these new powers and she started to plan her revenge. After months of training, she manages to steal the Soul Emerald and take revenge on her father, avenging her late mother, but gaining a scar on her right eye in the process of doing this. And it's the one injury that she can't heal no matter how hard she tries. Not long after this, she accidentally uses the Emerald to travel to Sonic's dimension, trying to escape after what she had done. After that, that, the rest is history. She lives more peacefully there, being a loner pirate and going on her own heists. Most of the problems she gets in are caused by her friends, Canelo and Willow, who are OCs owned by Bureau's friends, or because she went overboard with her own abilities while stealing. So what can I say? I love a pirate character. I just do. So of course I had to draw Sun, and Bureau's gorgeous art style caught my eye right away. I absolutely love how you draw, and I adore this OC's outfit. She is so beautiful. This is one where I definitely wanted to have a more more dynamic pose and perspective so I really tried pushing it as much as I could. It was pretty tough but I think it turned out well and I really loved working on this one. I just like her design so much, she's way too cool and we just need more pirate stuff and media in general. This is kind of off topic but did anybody ever watch the animated movie Sinbad? It was a childhood favorite of mine and drawing this made me want to rewatch it soon. Anyways, thanks again Bioroy for your submission. I really hope that you like how I drew Son the Tiger. Our next OC is Mimi the Pink Spotted Lady Beetle, submitted by Venny Bunny. And there's not too much to Mimi's backstory. She has the ability to fly and has a powerful punch. When she was young, she was found by a character named Sunny the Sugar on a lily pad and has been friends with her since. She also has a pet moto bug named Peanut that is very helpful to her. And she is a sweet girl, but she can also be rude at times. And she also is very tough and enjoys fighting. So I chose to draw Mimi because her design caught my eye right Right away. I think it's so appealing and effective. I love this color palette, the bright pink, yellow, and teal, and then the black fur. It's so vibrant and cute and really fitting for this OC. There weren't a lot of details about Mimi's backstory, but she definitely seems really young. And since Vinny Bunny mentioned that Mimi can be a bit rude, I wanted to show her being sort of like a bratty kid. For some reason, I decided to draw from a high angle again. I guess I really just kept wanting to challenge myself. I drew her making this like sort of mocking face, like sticking her tongue out just like a cute little bratty kid expression and I'm not used to drawing this type of thing but I think it turned out really well especially the expression on her face so yeah I just got to give my props to Vinny Bunny for this super cute drawing and beautiful character design I really love this OC so much so thanks again for your submission Vinny Bunny I really hope that you like how I drew Mimi Next up, we have Spinner the Hedgehog, submitted by Nav, and Nav said that he is a pretty new OC, so he doesn't have a backstory yet. And Nav is pretty new to the Sonic fandom as a whole, and this is his first Sonic OC ever. And he said he's not sure if the design fits the Sonic world. I think it fits. You can do anything. There are no rules here. <laughs> But in terms of weapons, Spinner does have a two-sided scythe that retracts. 
So I chose this OC because I really, really like Nav's reference photo. I think the colors and the disconnected head just caught my eye right away. And since there wasn't a reference for the two-sided scythe that you mentioned, I just looked up two-sided scythe on Pinterest and made it up, which made me realize I should probably do more practice drawing weapons and objects. Even with all the references on Pinterest, I was struggling. But that's also probably because of the extreme foreshortening I decided to use on this for some reason. I really was in the mood to challenge myself, I guess. And while I like how it turned out, I feel like I couldn't nearly match the charm of your original drawing in my rendition. But still, Nav, I hope that you like my version of Spinner. I know that you said that you're new to the Sonic fandom, so welcome! I hope it's serving you well. I hope you're having lots of fun. Thanks again so much for your submission. I hope that you like how my drawing of Spinner turned out. The next OC we have is Athena the Highland Cow submitted by Bunny Noir and Bunny Noir said that they made Athena very recently because they discovered what Highland cows were and fell in love with their fur colors and fluffiness and how cute they are. So Athena is a Highland cow with super strength. She was known as Experiment 273 when she was taken by Eggman after her parents had passed away in a tragic accident when she was just a preteen. He started experimenting on her to try to make her stronger, faster, and smarter than Sonic, but he was only only able to increase her strength before she escaped at the age of 18 and then was later found and rescued by Sonic and his friends. I chose this OC because I love the drawing that you made, Bunny Noir, and I also love the simplicity of this character design so much. The limited color palette looks amazing. I like the effect of the bangs covering her eyes and all the touches of gold is really great too. It adds just enough contrast and again, your art style is so sleek and pretty. Amazing job. I knew I wanted to show her looking really cool and buff and I do like the pose that I went with. I tried to emphasize the musculature in her arms so you can tell how buff she is. And Athena is just a very cool looking character and I was so excited to draw her and I absolutely had a blast doing it. So thank you Bunny Noir for your submission. I really hope that you like how I drew your OC. And last but not least, we have Sprig the Possum, submitted by Wolfie. And Sprig is a very carefree and happy little dude. He's able to use his big tail to whack and slam down onto enemies' heads. And Wolfie explained Sprig's backstory in terms of the past and the present. So in his past, when he was little, he absolutely adored bug hunting and adventuring, unlike his five siblings who often clung to their mother, which often meant that he went into the woods alone. One day on a summer afternoon, he came across a small spring that seemed to glow. Of course, he didn't mind the odd glow it was emitting as he was more interested in possibly finding diving beetles. He excitedly ran to the edge of the water and peered into it, but before Sprig could get a good look at the pond, something slash someone rushed past him with such speed that he fell in. When he finally waded out of the pond, it had completely lost its glow and Sprig returned home wet and disappointed. His mom immediately noticed that he had two little sprouts coming out of his head and no matter what she did to them, they would always grow back. So in the present, with the power of plant manipulation that the pond had gifted to Sprig, he decided to use it to help others. He was able to grow whatever plant he wants at will and started to grow herbs to treat others ailments or sores, which then evolved into a potion slash medicine store where he sells his concoctions for a very cheap price as he has all the plants he needs available to him at all times. He also has a pet stag beetle named Zip. And I had so much fun drawing Sprig. I chose him because I just love his color. He's got all my favorite shades of green in his design and green is my favorite color. So he's super cute. I knew I wanted to draw him immediately. I also think his story is so adorable. We love a plant slash nature powered character. It never gets old. And with his posing, he is technically just standing there, but I wanted to push the perspective and the angle a bit to make it a little bit more interesting. And I think I achieved that somewhat, I would say. And I just had a great time working on him. I love how simple, again, his color palette is. I like his little stripy shorts. He's just very, very cute and appealing and charming. So. Thank you so much, Wolfie, for your submission. I really enjoyed drawing Sprig. He is too cute, and I hope that you like how I drew him. Thanks so much for watching. I had a lot of fun working on these OCs, but I will definitely never make another one of these this big again, unless it's for another big milestone. Like if I reach like 50,000 subscribers or something, I don't know. But I will continue doing this series occasionally. I think I won't pressure myself to do it every month anymore because as someone pointed out to me, I recently got a comment saying, this seems like a lot of work. And 
it is. <laughs> it definitely is. And I usually try to do it within a week, which is so ridiculous. So I'm gonna stop being so wacky with my expectations for myself. It's something I could talk about forever. So maybe I will save that discussion about my YouTube process for future videos because I definitely need and want to make some changes to how I approach this platform. But yeah, the series will still be going on. So feel free to keep submitting your OCs. Just potentially I'll be posting the videos less often because five characters in a video is a lot of work. I guess I could just try to do less OCs in each video, but five is such a good number. How could I not do five? Anyways, all of my important links are in the description. I have a Kofi. If you would like to tip or commission me, either is very, very much appreciated. And don't forget to like and subscribe. It feels weird saying that. But yeah, wherever you are, keep being creative in whatever ways are available to you. And please take care of yourself. I will see all of you in the next video, hopefully next week. Bye!